All right, so you have done the protocol, mostly homeopathic, right? You've never done? Yes. My first round was RX. I might have done another one in there. Okay, but my but... problem was I would, um, it, when I injected a few different times, I would get, um, what's that called, where you get shaky and stuff like that. I don't know. I would, I think it was more of like fear of the needle. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, huh? I would probably have the same issues. Okay, yeah. so your first round was the best, and since then you've done innumerable rounds. You, your first round was in 2009, so it's been five years, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't even count how many times that you've attempted this protocol. In between right. there, you've actually gotten pregnant, mm -hmm. had a baby. And what we were just talking about is how when you, when you were pregnant, all of a sudden your, your standards and how strict you are with your body image goes away. You're right. old, and, and that changed your eating patterns. You, you did say that you still ate excessively because you felt like, well, I'm pregnant. I can kind of relax and right. enjoy this. But at the same time, you noticed that your impulses to binge went away completely. Mm -hmm. Not because yep. of anything other than there wasn't a pressure to lose weight for you. So as soon right. as you had the baby and had the grace time afterwards, and you started to diet again and started to feel pressure and the need to lose weight and get back to some idea, your urges to binge came, became massive, right? And so you've been binging and purging. Are you purging? Um, it's kind of strange. I don't really have a pattern. Sometimes I do. Okay. Um, like I find I, I go to that if I'm not on the protocol. Like, Got it. That's my... Yeah, and that may be because you're taking in such a huge quantity of food in your binging period that you're like, well, you only eat that much knowing you're going to purge, so you choose yeah. to purge ahead of time. Right. So your quantity of food is in relation to the fact that you know you're going to puke it out. So you're eating so much more than you really would, <laughs> right? Even if it was a binge, yeah. a dieting purge, right? A diet purge, people, for the most part, don't eat to the point to where their stomach feels like it's going to explode because then they right. have to sit with pain. But people who know they're going to puke immediately will go that far and then they'll do it again. Yeah. You yeah. know, they'll, they'll, they'll do it again just to get rid of the food that they have. Yep. So it's not a matter of wanting the food or needing the narcotic from food. They just know we got to get rid of this food so that when mm -hmm. I start my crazy ass diet again tomorrow, even though I'm purging this, that it's gone, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So there's logic going into how you're going to binge. But it yeah. changes depending on how you're going to purge, right? So if you were going to do a diuretic purge, it would be different. If you were going to exercise purge, you'd have a little more boundaries, right? Because you got to okay. exercise. Yeah. you got to be able to have the calories, right, within a zone of what you're exercise can burn. manage. Exactly. So if you're going to puke, <laughs> you can go till uh, pain. You can actually hurt yourself, yeah. puke it up, do it again, puke it up, do it again. For me, um, I went between exercise and puking. And when I stopped puking, I went straight to exercise. So my eating did get a little bit more or like my binges were a little bit more controllable because uh -huh. I knew I had to match it with how much exercise I'd be willing to take, which was at least two hours and at least 1,500 calories burned on the machine. And at yeah. least fatigue. I had to go to also massive, massive fatigue. So it wasn't just calories. So you know, I want you to be conscious of that, right? And all of that, all of that work that you're doing is because of what? Because you want to lose weight. Yeah. Because you were afraid to gain weight. Right. Both. Yeah. Don't you think your fear of gaining weight is far more impulsive too than your fear of, um, yeah, fear of gaining is intense if you've lost. So the more weight you lose, the more fear you have to gain. Yeah. And that's usually when people have far worse binging episodes is when they've actually lost and they have fear of gain. Yeah. So when you're yeah. like, when you're overweight to start the binging and you're less likely to actually puke when you're over overweight because, because mm -hmm. you don't have anything to defend as much. Okay. Is that lining up? Lining up? Yeah. So there's like the spectrum, right? There's a spectrum of bulimia. Mm -hmm. 
what unfortunately in the you know psychiatric there's only one form of bulimia whereas bulimics now there's a variety of ways to do this <laughs> so what yeah. what i've observed at least in the 15 years of observing dieters the mm -hmm. last five years has been obviously been more intense because it's been specific to dieting versus exercise but uh -huh. the fatter someone is the more likely they are to diet after they binge okay the as you get into more of a middle ground mm -hmm. we get a little bit of dieting a little bit of purging but the purging the actual puking part of bulimia mm -hmm. is with people who who are on the edge they've lost weight they've lost yeah. weight and they yeah. are they are so they get a very intense fear response when they have eaten more than they should they have far more guilt they attach more because you attach to the losses right so if you've lost right. 30 pounds or 50 pounds and you think you're a better person because of it mm. think about what that does to the anxiety when you think you're gaining now you yeah. think you're a worse person far worse than what you were 50 pounds heavier so your emotional oh. attachment to needing to get rid of the food is far stronger after you've lost that a significant amount of weight. Makes complete sense. <laughs> Notice the logic behind right. all these emotions. There's actually thinking going on. You're not yep. just an animal that can't think. There's a lot of thoughts that actually fuel this emotional issue with food that stems from yeah. the body image, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So when you're messaging me and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm out of control. It's far worse than it's been. I'm hearing you and I'm like, well, I can deduct that you've lost a significant amount of weight in the past. Otherwise your yep. behavior wouldn't be so crazy. If you were 250 pounds, do you think you'd be purging as much? No. <laughs> and I've never, this never crossed my mind. That's amazing. Yeah. To help you a little bit, to forgive yourself, yeah. or at least have a little bit more understanding around why you're, why it's so easy for you to puke. You know, people yeah. don't understand that when you have security on the line, like you actually felt or attached security to the weight loss and you feel like you're protected by the weight loss, your yeah. behavior is far more defensive, very yeah. defensive, because you feel like you need to defend yourself. Someone right. who's 200 plus or whatever pounds don't they don't feel they need to defend themselves as much so they're far more mm -hmm. you know graceful in terms of how they purge they would much rather spend two months on a restrictive diet than to puke because they right. don't have the same desperation yeah they don't have to Does be as defensive sense? so what what's going to need to happen for you and i and i want you to tell me what your goals are i mean when you when you watched the, the videos you found me on YouTube, you're watching these videos, and you're obviously connecting with what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Your objective with me is what? I want to stop the cycle. I want, I've, like I was saying to you before, I've spent a lot of my life in this, like devoting so much of my time and effort to losing weight <laughs> and never, like, getting there, you know, and I just, I want to devote my time to other things. I have a new baby and I want to, you know, play and be creative and all of that stuff. And I don't want to devote so much of my self to dieting and I don't want to pass it on to my daughter. Can you that's see how that you're, thing. can you see how that's going to happen? Yeah. How you'll pass it on? Oh yeah. Yeah. Part, yeah. Like, part of the issue too is just, if you don't know oh, how, God. part of the problem too, and I think this is even more important than the body image stuff is that if you don't understand how to process information or process emotions, because this really is an emotional issue for you that you think losing weight will fix. Yeah. Once we get weight out of the, the out of the equation, once we get weight out of the paradigm we now have to deal with your inability to process and understand your emotions right because that's what happens if we get rid of the weight belief system right that weight's going to fix all of your emotional insecurity well if yeah. it's not going to help your emotional insecurity and we get rid of that crutch what are you left with emotional insecurity 
If you don't know how to secure and understand and process human emotions, how are you going to help your child do the same? Right. Because if you can't process your emotions, how are you going to help your child to process their emotions that are the same human emotions? Yeah. That's the vulnerability, don't you agree? Screw the weight stuff. Yeah. If you think weight is the way to feel better about your issues, that mm -hmm. is the only thing that you really are accessing as a hope that there might be an issue, a, a, a resolution to your emotions, right? Yeah. Did I confuse you? Because I kind of confused myself there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, I understood what I said, but I'm like, I don't think this is coming out in a way that's making sense. But basically... If, if you have emotions you don't know how to feel, or, or let me rephrase that. If you don't, if you have emotions that you feel that you don't understand, how are you to see that in your child when they have that emotion and help them understand it? Well, you'll recognize they have the emotion and you're going to give them solutions that you don't even know will work because you don't even know. You won't even know how to talk to them about the emotion. Otherwise, I know when I feel that way, this is what I do. I eat popcorn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I look at Shape Magazine and look at how thin everybody's waist is and hope that that might fix my problems. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm going to try to organize my food. If I have this feeling controlling my food is what makes me feel temporarily better about the problems, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your solution to these emotional issues, we have to get rid of and we have to start over. Right. So we, it starts with, let's, let's get rid of the belief that your weight is going to improve your vulnerability, your fear of rejection and abandonment, your fear of people not liking you, fear of not having validation for you. Because when people want to lose weight, this is very common. The reason why most people want to lose weight is because they want to feel validated by others mm -hmm. and by themselves. They think that that will be proof. There's proof in the law in the losses, right? There's a physical visible proof that you're valuable based on yep. a, a set of rules. So here's a set of rules. I will be that that's proof that I'm valuable based on those set of rules, right? Right. So it, there's so much neediness in terms of getting validation with that belief system. I mean, if someone doesn't compliment you, it can be hurtful. Yeah. Um, the, the flip side of that is someone does compliment you, then you can, you can be the martyr role and say, Oh my God, did you think I was bad before? But mm -hmm. even if you don't care about other people's validation, I at least got to the point where I didn't care about other others validation for me. I needed the validation and I needed to prove that I didn't lose standing. You know what I mean? It was almost like pride in the fact that I can show everybody that I proved you all wrong. I went to college and didn't gain weight. I went to college and I'm still perfect physically. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's so much pride and ego associated right. to, to that, right? Especially for yeah. people who have actually had a nice body at one point. Mm -hmm. Which isn't me. <laughs> okay. Well, let me tell you, if you've lost weight, let's say, for example, yeah. people who lose. And I did feel higher. I did feel better about myself mm -hmm. when I did lose weight. So that's hard for me to get past. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. People who at some uh -huh. point believe that I'm talking about people who at some uh -huh. point believe that they are, I am now valued because I have the validation to prove it with my weight and how much I lost. Like I can say, here's right. how much I lost. I'm mm -hmm. better than you. I am more successful. I did it. Ask me how, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily a real improvement to your psychological processing, your emotional understanding. It's just this mm -hmm. weird facade of make-believe value. Yeah. yeah. The downside, right, is that when you regain weight back, what are you left to feel? I, I guarantee you, you feel far worse now about your weight than you did before. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> because you yes. have atta you attached success and worth yep. to the losses. So now you are void. You are you lost it. You lost success and value. 
Yep. So now it's Definitely. worse in terms of brain chemistry. So your reaction to the weight gain is far worse, which is how things spiral out of control in terms of what you're willing to do and manipulate and willing to obsess about and how hard you're willing to work. It's far, far, I can assume, far more obsessive today than it was the last time you were this way. Yes. That's what the protocol does if you don't yeah. get the right type of help. If you obsess about your weight, guess what you get? OCD and eating disorders. I get contacted so, so much with the same story as you. This protocol is dangerous for people who have eating disorders. Yeah, I can. Binge eaters. Yeah. It's so dangerous for you. Dangerous. Yeah. If you don't get proper assistance. And it, what I'm talking about is eating disorder assistance, depression, depression, obsessive compulsiveness, um, low self-worth. If you, Don't go to a therapist who has their own eating disorder and dieting issues. Trust me on that one. You need someone that doesn't have issues in this paradigm. <laughs> but it's worse. And unfortunately, it's cra it, what happens because we're adults, right? How many... 12 year olds do I see? How many 15 year olds do I see doing the HCG protocol? None, right? right? We're adults and we have children and we have jobs and we have life. And now we're being sucked into this psychological damaging obsessive compulsive disorder that actually may not be hurting our children. Well, her, it is hurting ourselves and our marriages and our lives and our work environments, but it's damaging the people around us because we're so obsessive and this is such a big deal to us that it takes away from our wellness and happiness in other areas of our lives. Can you tell? Have you noticed that? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. There's hope, honey. It doesn't take much. We just have to get you to release your soul from having to be thin. Okay. We just, we need to get rid of the weight belief system. We need to get a tangible sense of your worth that is founded on, on the soul and the spirit. And we need to kind of, yeah, separate the physical world from the actual psychological and emotional world. We need to get rid of this bias with your body for you to start tending to the needs that you have emotionally. Okay. Physically, we know the protocol can heal the issues. Mm -hmm. It can heal a lot of issues, but okay. as you know, and as you've experienced, it cannot heal low self-worth. It cannot heal <gasps> emotional immaturity. Yeah. So if you don't heal the emotional immaturity and in the, in the, then the foundation of your sense of worth, then you're going to use this protocol and it becomes what it's become for you, which is, self-mutilation yeah so we've got to put your desires to lose weight aside for now okay and okay. we need to develop this sense of confidence without needing validation i think that's really key too if you need other people's validation it's not mm -hmm. truly yours you're not taking true personal responsibility you're you're yeah. you're ch making changes and hoping other people can validate it that's putting responsibility on other people's shoulders so I think for, for this to really, really work for you, I'm going to give you so much responsibility and I'm going to guide you in a way that's going to help you develop emotional strength very quickly. The only way okay. this can be, can be done is if you take 100% responsibility and not distract yourself with seeking help from other people, from other um, uh, narcotic stimulus wine, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, pharmaceuticals, uh -huh. um, sex, gambling, shopping, every way at this point that you can distract yourself, we've got to make sure that you don't go anywhere, that you sit there with the emotion, you sit in the discomfort of it. Having that okay. discomfort is such a fabulous motivator for change. This is like saying if you do something and you get the natural consequence, you're, you're forced to then look at if you want to do that again, right? The consequences of poor behavior or not, not dealing with emotions mm -hmm. ultimately should be helping you change, right? right? Does that make sense? If you're given a consequence and have to take responsibility for it, what's the likelihood that you'll repeat the same mistake? 
not. It isn't. But what happens when you've been dieting is you're not having to take responsibility. You're putting yeah. responsibility on the diet to take to make you feel better about yourself. You're putting the yep. responsibility on food to make you feel better for about yourself, right? You're you're going right. to let's say to Facebook and posting selfies so that people will like you more and put likes and like that makes you feel good about yourself, right? You're relying yeah. on all these external validations, right? <clears throat> We've got to get That's you true. to not want to go anywhere else that you develop a sense of your own validation based on right. looking and resolving your emotional response to things that you hadn't, that you haven't resolved in the past that you <clears throat> don't know how to deal with today. Mm -hmm. Do you see how that will change ultimately your relationship with your body after the fact? I do see that. Yeah, I do. Would there be more pressure to lose weight? After you develop self-worth or less pressure to lose weight? Less. Less pressure. Less. How about yeah. how about patience? Will there be more patience or less patience if we improve your confidence in yourself? Definitely more patience. Absolutely. No pressure, less patience. And wouldn't you agree that if you were to feel emotionally developed, emotionally um, confident in yourself without needing anything else, that your relationship with your body, especially if you do all this emotional work in the body you have today, right? Wouldn't you say the body you have today would be a vulnerability for you? But if you can develop a sense of worth and confidence and emotional confidence with the body you have today, isn't that an accomplishment? Mm -hmm. And in, in, in that you are unconditionally accepting of the body, right? Where you could easily, based on our cultural standards and all the crazies out there, right? That are helping you have an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. That if you can do this without needing to lose weight, that your disordered eating will go away. We don't have to work at it. Right. Okay. That's really important that you understand that part of this, that if we get okay. this resolved, changing the way you eat won't feel, you won't have to have self-control. When people say, right. I'm just going to have to have self-control. That's like, Oh, hello. No, 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 no. That's the opposite of reality. The reality is you need to change this and then it doesn't require self-control. It just naturally mm -hmm. changes because you don't have so much desperation to lose weight. You don't have the pressure. You don't feel like you have to do it to make up for something emotional. You're not compensating for emotional insecurities. La, 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 la. Right. And then you're sitting there going, <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop recording and we're going to continue. Okay. How do you feel so far about this initial consultation? I feel excited. It's, a lot of this is stuff I've been thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, recently. So it's really, it's making sense to me. So I'm excited. Yeah. Are your plans to continue? Are you plans to continue to work with me? Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So we've got at least 10 more sessions coming after this. So okay. what do you think is going to happen in the next month? I don't know. I guess just, you know, trying to really, you know, identify when I'm having these emotional issues. <laughs> That's the number one And you're going to sit in them, right? Remember the yeah. goal. What I just said is the goal is to sit in them without distraction, without, without blame, without putting it on someone else's shoulders to fix without, it's like shutting all doors. So you are forced to sit in your crib without sucking your thumb. Okay. Does that make sense? It's like, you know what, yeah. these emotions and how they feel to you are a direct consequence of, mm -hmm. of, of not understanding them and not looking right. at them to, uh, to resolve them. So if you have okay. to sit in this, you're forced to say, you know what, I better understand this crap. Cause I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying to like it. I'm saying you need to not like it. We want to make it really uncomfortable for you. So this next month is going to be very uncomfortable. 
Okay. And as your coach, as your guide and as your coach, I will tell you the discomfort is where the solution is. Okay. Because that will ultimately set you free because yeah. you're taking, you're taking responsibility to resolve the issues. It's not weight loss's job. It's not food's job. It's not anybody else's job, but yours. And you benefit from it. You benefit, not the diet yeah. industry, not the food industry. You benefit. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds scary, but it sounds good. <laughs> well, it's read. like you have the, right. You have the, the suffering of what you're doing and yeah. you have the pain of what you've been avoiding. Mm -hmm. Okay. When this becomes, when people listen to me and they get this, this is when it's attractive to them. Some people don't get it because they're not suffering yet <laughs> enough. Yeah. They need to suffer more for them to figure this out. The suffering of what you're doing is on some level worse than what you perceive is the pain of dealing with what you've been running from. Make sense? Definitely. You've been running Definitely. from pain and the ultimate consequence is suffering with what you're running away from. You're running from pain. And that running yeah. away is why you suffer. So now right. the suffering is worse than the actual pain you're running away from. Right. That right there is how people get out of addiction <laughs> by yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. Is they make, they see that and they go, wow, I might as well sit in the pain. That feels yeah. like death because ultimately I'm killing myself and it's an awful, awful way to die. Yeah. Right. So we're going to, we're going to go into pain and I'm just going to be your supporter and I'm going to let you know when you're trying to escape it. Cause that's my job. I, I, the good news is that I've done this myself and I've used every ex 